reinforcement schedule. Uh, well, I don't know what that sounds like to me. It sounds like when I, whenever they used to say reinforcement to me, I always thought they meant like rebar, like, like the stuff on a bridge that you put in so it reinforces the structure and makes it strong. Um, took me a while to figure out what they were talking about. So a reinforcement schedule sounds like somebody's gonna lay rebar to me. Um, that is not what it is, although it's adjacent, right? Because we do wanna make something stronger, right? And we wanna do it on a regular basis. So let's take a look at what reinforcement uh, schedule is. First, we're gonna give you the actual definition and whenever possible, I try to make fun of it uh, because we all need a hobby. Reinforcement schedule, a schedule of reinforcement Ta-da! Well, now they've cleared that up for me. Uh, a, re a schedule of reinforcement that systematically thins each successive reinforcement. Just keep pounding. <laughs> Don't change the words. Just throw, keep throwing the same ones at us. Thins each successive, successive reinforcement opportunity independent of the participant's behavior by using arithmetic algorithms or geometric progressions to determine which responses obtain reinforcement? Well, you know what? If I think that reinforcement is rebar, this definition is completely useful to me. Really useful, right? What? Because how many times do they say reinforcement here? A, a reinforcement schedule is a schedule of reinforcement. Well, my work here is done, right? This is why we have to do. And then I don't know about you, but as a parent of a child and uh, on the spectrum and somebody says, well, we're gonna talk about your reinforcement schedule. And then they start talking about arithmetic algorithms and geometric progressions. What the heck? So useless, useless to me. Let's go on to our working definition here and see if we can't make heads or tails out of this thing. Okay, so reinforcement schedule is not giving, uh, look, there's the word again, uh, not giving reinforcement every time, but deciding to give it mindfully to keep targeted behaviors continuing. All right, sometimes the, the you know, the work, working definition is not, not that much better. So let's talk about what reinforcement is, because this can be a little bit tricky. A reinforcement is a reward, that much is true, but it's a reward that actually makes something happen. So a lot of times we're guessing what's reinforcing um, and, and that's okay uh, as long as we're checking in with the individual to see what they want. So, you know, and you can do this with very small babies. We've talked about this before. We do a preference assessment and we set up three stuffed animals and, you know, we see that the baby picks up the, the bunny. Okay. And now we, you know, we, play with the bunny for a second. We take the bunny back and we rearrange the order. So now the bunny is on the end where before it was on the middle and we see, does the child still go for the bunny? And they do, great. We rearrange them again and we put it on the other end and the baby still goes for the bunny. Now, our supposition here is, our thought process is the baby likes the bunny right now. Right now, the baby is into the bunny and wants to play with the bunny because they didn't switch no matter where it was. Okay. We're, you know, we're, we're stretching it a little bit, but we've checked in and the baby likes the bunny. Great. So now we're going to do something and um, with the child to teach them something. And when they give a response that we are encouraging, not necessarily even the right response, but in a response we're encouraging, we're going to reward them with the bunny. And if we see that they're learning more because of the bunny, then we know that the bunny is a reinforcer right now. It's important to say right now, because sometimes the things that you find reinforcing change based on your mood, based on the time of day, based on how much you've had of it, right? So it's really important that we are reinforcing individuals for doing hard work. Think about it. What do you get reinforced for at work? And it's not just one thing. You get a paycheck. Woo, that's a good thing, right? Um, but there are other ways that you get reinforcement too. Like your boss says, great job. You did really well with that, right? And for some people, that's enough to keep you coming back for a paycheck that's not as rewarding as it should be, right? So it's only reinforcing if it actually is keeping a behavior happening. So as we are, we start in the beginning and, and we give a lot of reinforcement 
And then we start to change it a little bit. Um, so we're gonna be talking over the next two weeks, our jargon is gonna cover reinforcement schedule and types of reinforcement. So in the beginning though, when you're teaching something, you're giving reinforcement a lot, but then we start to look at, you know, how do we wanna be mindful about this? When are we gonna give reinforcement? When are we not gonna give reinforcement? Parents get all tweaked about this. Why should I give my child a reward for cleaning their, they should just wanna clean their room. Well, who wants to clean their room, first of all, right? Uh, or they should just want to be polite to someone. Um, that's great and we wanna to work towards that. Um, but most people don't do something unless it's reinforcing. I like to tell the story for my son. There was a time when we were, we were working on a safety protocol and the beginning of the safety protocol, before you can even teach what's safe, you gotta teach them who to go to if something happens. So it was on our schedule to go to visit. Um, first I had to take pictures of all of the stores that we went to. So like there was a picture of Trader Joe's and there was a picture of Target, right? Um, and then, and they helped him to identify, you know, that those were places that we go to. Then we went to those stores and he had to find the workers there and figure out um, what, like at Target, the workers wear tan khaki pants and a red shirt and they have a name tag. And that's how you know that they're a worker. Well, that's different than the Trader Joe's people. Trader Joe's, they wear big Hawaiian shirts and a name tag, right? So he really keyed into the name tag thing and, and was, you know, cause they were like, how can you find the worker here, right? And by the way, they generalized with it with him um, to, you know, so that we went to places that we hadn't ever discussed before. And they would say to him, hey, who are the workers here? And he would, you know, go, oh, I think, you know, it's them. And it was somebody who was wearing a white shirt with black pants. So he didn't get the idea that, you know, it's always a red shirt with khaki pants, right? Um, but one of the things that he noticed was that a lot of times workers have a name tag and he was learning how to read at the same time. And he, so he would just sort of read out loud and go Betty when he would see the name tag, right? And that was just him identifying, oh, okay, this is the worker. Well, whenever he was a cute little boy and whenever he would see somebody's name and say their name, people orient to you and they look at you and they go, hi, and when you're cute, they do a big, and sometimes they give you a lollipop and some, so he learned, oh, when you look at somebody's name tag and say their name, people like it. And you get things because they like it. To this day, I mean, you know, he's this big, tall, bushy haired, bearded man now. Um, but it's, and I, he probably doesn't even remember this, but it's ingrained in him whenever we, when we used to go places, we don't go anywhere anymore, but he would see people and, and, uh, you know, he'd say, hi, Doug, how you doing today? Reading their name tag. And Doug would always be like, doing well, sir, doing well. And, and my son finds that still reinforcing because he got a great reaction from it. So, um, you know, sometimes we, we start something and it's reinforcing and we don't know why it's reinforcing. Um, but if there's something pleasurable about it, most things that have something pleasurable will become reinforcing and they will encourage a behavior to stick in. So for parents who are freaked out about like, why do I constantly have to be giving my child a paycheck? This is gonna start to help you to feel a little bit better about it because after a period of time, we no longer, my son's not getting the lollipop anymore, right? But it's still reinforcing, it's socially reinforcing. In the beginning, you know, he didn't, most things weren't socially reinforcing, but they are now. So we start to be mindful about when are we giving the reward? How often are we doing it? And we, we have a schedule and there's all different kinds of schedules. Don't panic, we're gonna go over them in the next couple of weeks. But I just want you to know that there is a reinforcement schedule. And you, you know, life is good when you're getting reinforced appropriately for the things that you're doing. Isn't that the best? Don't we all need that? Are you all on a reinforcement schedule? When was the last time you reinforced yourselves for doing the things that you do? Because I know you guys are working hard. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.